Hi, I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're all to say welcome to our channel. Today we're watching ReZero, Season 2, Episode 23. We are here, the third trial, facing what is yet to come. The disaster that is yet, that is to, yet come. to come. We're cheered on by the people of the sanctuary. And that, you know, filled us with a lot of, like, hope and positivi positivity feelings. But as soon as you get a word like disaster and then the episode ends, that's pretty crushing a little bit. A little bit. But Echidna said that the other two trials wouldn't be as like as big or difficult. So I'm a little bit like hopeful that this isn't going to be too bad. But I have hope that Amelia will get through it. That is not my issue here. I um have self-preservation issues here for my own self. That's not fair. the characters in the show, but me, the person that is going to have to watch this disaster yet to come. I'm worried about myself here. I'm being selfish. Mm. Self-centered. Yeah, that's fair. We also have, obviously, the mansion story plot. <laughs> that's still happening. Puck and, and Ram. Which are you more worried for your self-preservation about? Which, which point? Oh, that's really fair. Mansion or sanctuary? I don't feel worried about Ram, Puck, Roswall. I like that. I'm I would be entertained to be visiting there, but I am not worried about it. And I feel like it wouldn't harm me emotionally as much as the other two. The mansion, I... I feel like this has to be the last time, the last ending. But my worry comes from a conversation that Subaru had had at one of the tea parties about the idea that there might be a time where he does have to lose someone. Yeah. And he can't go back or shouldn't go back to save them because what if it is just faded? There is no actual way. And what if there does have to be someone sacrificed for the future where he has said he would not do. He does not agree with that idea that mm. he can't bring everyone into the future with him. He even told Roswell he wants to bring Roswell into the future with him. Yep. I'm not worried at all. Everything's going to be great. Not a single bad thing will happen this episode. You're not going to be emotionally... No disasters. No turmoil from watching the disaster that is yet to come. Nope. You're. I well, can't wait to see your reaction and then how you feel at the end of the episode. I'll be looking at you. I'll be like, so Ben, how did, how did you like that? How you feeling? Ready? Yeah. Sweet. Give me more Betty. Oh, we did. We were curious if Betty was going to do anything. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Go off, Garth. My wound sealed. I was wondering why she still had an eyeball. His buddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. Garf has so much faith in you. That was a great cut. Don't give up yet. It's exactly what's happening. They know each other so well. Remember why you're smiling. His unparalleled knowledge of the modern. Are we gonna like get a red cape? Like, is that the modern world thing? Does he have like a bone? Is he gonna throw it out the window? You're right, is he gonna try to get it to go out the window? Science! <laughs> Hell yeah! Oil. Petra Auto double team is something I never knew I needed. Oh, now it's just on fire! 
Damn! We can help. Gunpowder is not possible? Question mark. You know, the fire was a great idea, uh, idea until you think about it actually being inside the building. He has to get Betty out. He has to get Betty out. Be her friend. <laughs> I love both of these. I wonder if Betty's just like continuously switching rooms to get away from the fire. The graininess is similar to that of Versatella when I know. Here. What the fuck? What? Was that Ram? <gasps> Why is she there? Is this still you know what this is doing to me, right? All the possible ones, like, return. Look at how sim they have the, the same style of dress. And I love her for it. Yep. The future can be changed. They won't let me be alone. Anna. I'm at least so- come on. Come on. There's a possibility, right? It might be too obvious, but come on. Why else wouldn't she let her turn around? <笑>私の母様は<笑> Oh, 
Do you feel so validated right now? <laughs> I'm not 100% confident, but a little but bit. But it's more yeah. evidence. But also, I just thought it was a great scene. Yeah. And Echidna didn't want to be there. Wow. That's so fucking cool. Is it not? It looks like a kidna. Right? The spell is like generating from her. I love the score. There's so many. What the oh. fuck? Damn. What? Great editing! Oh! I love the licking the lips there. Holy shit! What the fuck? Oh! But she can heal instantly! What type of injuries can she heal from? I like the logic. Vampire. You know what? One of the witches was a vampire? Do you think it was Pandora? Pandora had a similar, like, healing, right? Why 
do I love her? Holy shit. <laughs> Best lines, come on. What a My fucking love line. for you will begin after I kill you. This, this is like the one of the best fights ever in ReZero. I like that effect of the blood being taken back. Hold, this is the best ReZero fight. Are you kidding me? Whoo! The glass shard, just like how she said she killed that man. <gasps> Elsa's sister truly is. Oh, what? Your sister was saved by Frederica. <gasps> like a vampire bite! Oh, Whoa! they're biting each other's necks! This is insane! It's through his hand! Garf is the cool- what a shot. Oh my god. Oh, the sound! Love me down to my blood and guts. Oh! It's been a wild ride. This is such a great episode so far. Mm. せいきにでむく前、スバル君と喧嘩して気落ちしているエミリア様とあなたとの契約に採掘するくらいは絶やす。君は we know who that is! Devil of Melancholy. Wow. Oh! He's so powerful. It's for you. Listen to the song. If only it were out of regret. He's rattled. He's rattled. Oh. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Go off, fuck. Oh. Made him think that he had actually transformed. Oh!
Okay, that was ReZero Season 2, 23. That was one of the best episodes of this entire series. I feel like I've said this recently, but this is one of those episodes of ReZero, as there are so many, where I feel like an idiot to even think that I can start talking about it yep. after just witnessing it. I completely agree. I, there, there was so much, and so much so happened. So much. I mean, honestly, obviously... ReZero doesn't really include the openings and a long outro very often. The episodes run long. And there is... Isn't it crazy how much more you can include when your episode is maybe 29 minutes instead of, like, a normal 23 with an opening? Like, what ReZero squeezes into... And it's not even squeezing. The pacing is always great. What it puts into this package of an episode, it's like you feel like there's an ending point oftentimes and you're ready to then start talking about it like oh cool i can talk about what just happened and then a new thing just comes and rewrites everything that was just in your brain and you're like well now this is what i would want to talk about yep. this is the point that i am more hyper fixated on out of all of the points in this episode i think that because of that it would benefit us to just like go back to the first 50 seconds and then just kind of go point to point like chronologically yes. Um, but it's before needed. before then, I do want to compliment especially the editing this episode. Editors popped off. The two the two moments that immediately come to mind um, are both back to the amazing scores. It was uh, during the, the the last like final battle between Elsa and Garf, and the cutting back and forth was fantastic. And then at the end of the episode with ram and roswell the editing again was flawless mm -hmm. um but taking it back the first thing that we're really getting this episode is of garth and elsa and within this conversation and interaction we are told that elsa self-heals she can heal her injuries obviously like i'm like what the fuck magic bullshit is this and now I have to realize that not only witches live in this world, but so do vampires. Devils, vampires, and witches. And one witch apparently was a vampire. Which I liked your guess during the episode that it was Pandora. I like that idea. The it, it could track for me. I could see that. But yes, what else lives in this? It's so interesting that we're already being given a world where there are witches and magic and mob beasts. And then we're surprised when we hear vampire. We're like, wait, what? One of the witches was a vampire a long time ago. That witch is dead, so I can kill you too. Which is a sound argument on Carp's end to, honestly, because that means it's not impossible. Not only was that person a witch, they were also a vampire. Means they were doubly hard to kill, but it wasn't impossible. Yeah, so let's stay in the same Elsa vein throughout, like, just coming out of the episode. But that since Elsa was the first thing that was really happening in the episode, that should be the first thing that we're talking about in general. Okay. Now, in terms of, since you brought it up, witches, a witch who was a vampire, the idea, the only real, like, ability in ReZero universe that a vampire seemingly is like has is shown to us we see like the biting of the neck everything that like is cliche and tropey for us but i don't i wouldn't be comfortable saying like a wooden stake would kill a vampire in ReZero the only thing i have to go off of is that ability to endlessly heal right i think anytime we've seen a character in any media have a healing ability what you have to do to combat that is that there is a timing process for that healing and you need to create such an injury that combats with the uh, timing process of the self-healing yeah. what it takes to regenerate the cells how much time really is there in terms of like milliseconds seconds you need to do something that is attacking the timing of the healing and not Obviously, that person can continue healing if you don't do that. Yeah. And so, uh, how we defeat the vampire at the very end, I'm going to assume dead by the end of the episode. Elsa? Yes, I'm going to assume that she's dead by the end of the episode. That sound sound effect of the like neck cracking, horrific. head cracking sound, horrific. 
what he's doing there is he... If you have a healing ability, you could think of it akin to you... There's uh, magic in other shows, other media, where you are focusing in on a different part of your body in order to protect. The healing could be a similar way, same with the timing conversation, that you are focusing your energy toward that one location. Well, what happens when that location is then throughout your body? You don't have enough resources, time, or energy to go and attack all of those places of your body with healing at the same time. Yeah. And so I think that she's dead. I think the rock, the rock piggy body that Garf picked up has killed her. Garf popped off so much this episode. As we get through it and like we click around, there are like certain instances of animation and sequences and composition that were just phenomenal um do you what do you think would like how, how would you become a vampire in within this world do you think it's in such a way that like they're they're a race much like elves are like that there's just like a race of vampires we were given like Gu gustaco I, I i don't have the actual timestamp for that later in the episode of the origin of where Elsa was from, but within like the idea of vampires, what's your perception of how they exist within this world? So I have difficulty completely putting my finger on how I'm understanding it because initially we also have the idea that she w was taken in by this guy and he was going to do some nefarious things. And then from killing him, is where she gets her bloodlust and the thrill of killing, the, the warmth of blood. And so it makes me think that a vampire wouldn't necessarily be an actual creature, mm. but more so a, a desire or a driving force of a person. Like you, by having these principles and beliefs, be become a title like an archbishop like a, the kind the blood of blood lust yes like, if you have such bloodlust and uh affinity for blood then you would be coined a vampire and as a label what with such affinity and like such determination and obsession you are granted an ability that is self-healing because you've surpassed a thing right i mean you're bringing up like a hole in what i'm saying yeah, definitely yeah. with that there's magic in this world that is could be healing magic if they could be separate um be, and it's only because of the past scene that we saw with elsa that i can't totally get on board I, with it being a creature that she always was i totally because that because then what do you say about the sister you know like like what would she also the, be categorized as a vampire be, right? but i don't know the way that garf brings up vampires is in direct comparison to i read about a witch who was one and she died and that would be the constant the fact that both of them are vampires and the aspect of there being an end to a life i'd assume that that witch also had the same healing ability there could be something that is uh spell like or spiritual about messing with blood and with killing people in a certain sort of ceremonial way yeah that could be its own form of magic i i definitely think that elsa is one of my favorite characters in this entire universe i love the lines that they are giving her to say like they're so fucked up and cold and twisted i'm sure we will get to some later on but they're like just awesome character imagine being that voice actor and you don't know much about maybe you don't i don't know what voice actors do do they know much about their role or how much i'm sure they do research before they go in especially if they're like the english dub voice actor I, going into that room and being given this script and being like having to say those things and then just imagine going home to your family and <laughs> then being like how was work today say and anything cool did you say any cool lines in that booth for that show that you're recording for yeah these were the lines that i said like yeah. your family'd be like what type of character are you that's insane that you had to say that yeah uh next thing i want to talk about that happens in this episode is the mobbies chasing subaru okay. otto and petra and what they do in regards to handling it <laughs> They made it a little worse for for a minute, and that was by lighting this already dangerous thing on fire, which made that's that so even smart. more dangerous. So smart. Um, now, 
my favorite thing about this interaction was Subaru being like, if I die right on my gravestone that the cause of death was Otto's oil. Yeah, that's funny. I adore their relationship. It's so good. It is really good. When you brought up the idea of putting the mob beast that was already dangerous on fire and mixing two elements that are dangerous together and making something that's more dangerous all i could think of was sharknado so i had to write it down you're combining a tornado and a shark together not a good mix yeah um now i want to talk about what subaru attempted to do yes he referenced science and then said not enough dust not enough firepower i interpreted that initially as like oh was he trying to do some gunpowder explosion kind of thing you could take, I could take this in two directions. One was the material, uh, what was what Subaru had on hand and his plan at fault because of his own in like lack of knowledge and he didn't do it the right way. Or it was like a different material and it wasn't actually what Subaru assumed it would be in real life, like from what his previous modern, life was like. Modern world, as he said. Or are they trying to tell us that like, Within this world, chemicals don't react necessarily in the same way. That's super fun. I want to talk on that. As I, I think that that idea that it, because Subaru references the modern world, the world he came from as where he gets this reference, where he gets this idea to create uh, this dust bomb, if you will. I like the idea that there's a failure on his end of trying to utilize something from another world and thinking that it'll work the same exact way in another world. A world that has magic, a world that has vampires and mob beasts, a world with these magical crystals that can ward away mob beasts and tea and cookies made out of sloth factors. I like the idea that he was trying to apply something that cannot actually be applied, but then wouldn't that be funnier that the idea that the oil does work? Yeah. It would almost be more funny, like, oh, this might not work in this world, but you know what still does? Oil. Yeah. Oil's really flammable. If they were introducing that aspect, like, if that was the takeaway intended that, like, because it's a, like, we aren't saying anything for sure, but if it was that, you know, these things, like science and Subaru's understanding do doesn't apply to this world. I wonder what the narrative purpose would be to include that now going forward, like in, in later this season or the next season. I just raised my hand. <laughs> I just raised my hand like we were in class. I think that the purpose there might not necessarily be narrative for going forward, but narrative to end the arc of Elsa. When we first meet Elsa, we are dealing with the phone and we're first thinking about using this phone, this media in order to sell it, in order to utilize it as our bargaining chip against Elsa at the very, you know, like, oh, I'll give you this. I'll pay more money than Elsa would or yeah. the person that Elsa was working for. I think the idea of bringing the modern world and having Subaru attempt to use it here again while Elsa's around and then Elsa dying at the end it might be kind of bringing back some themes or ideas that were when she was introduced into the story. Interesting. I was thinking, like, coming out of this, if this is something Subaru remembers, like, and brings up, it could be, like, bring up the conversation of him being from another world, for one, but two, like, just opening that door or that avenue to testing other things to see what does and doesn't work within this world and why that might be the case, you know? Mm -hmm. But... It would be good knowledge for if it is the case that it doesn't work in this world because of the periodic table of elements is slightly different, mm -hmm. then it is information he would need to know yeah. going forward. Um, we have something to talk about next, and it is a pretty big a topic that might take a lot of time to go forward reading dialogue of this okay. interaction. Um. Do you have anything to say before we start talking about this thing regarding it? I had to keep my... At this scene that we're about to discuss and go into dialogue of, I had to refrain. And I think I did make an oopsie during the reaction and keep kind of hitting your shoulder and being like, Ben! 
uh, which I tried to refrain from doing as much as I wanted to. Yeah. Because I definitely wanted to. If we had been watching this by ourselves, I think I would have paused the TV and been like, dude. Yeah. Dude. Uh, so that's that's my segue. Into okay. This my thing that I want to preface before going into this is that I think I have a bad tendency that once I, I love speculating things. Mm -hmm. I love like just the questioning shit. I had the idea after going through each and every witch and how they looked that if Amelia's mother was a witch and it wasn't Satella, which other witch it would be. Mm -hmm. That led me to notice the only, the biggest similarity between any witch and Amelia is the Witch of Wrath, Minerva. Mm -hmm. Now, because of me bringing that up in the first place, I was like, holy shit, this is my fan theory at the moment. If it's w whatever. My, the issue that I have as a person is now that there's evidence given to me that that could be the case, I don't want to believe that that I'm right. I want to be like, oh, but this they'd only do this because she isn't Amelia's mom. And like, that's just me being like weird about it. But holy shit, we have to read some dialogue here, okay? Yeah. Amelia reaches for a biscuit, one of Echidna's biscuits. Yeah. That you wish that you could eat. I would do the same thing. Yeah, I've never related to Amelia harder. And then we get... Uh, Amelia's, sorry, Minerva saying you will regret reaching out so readily for a feast offered by a witch touches the back of Amelia's head. Immediately, I'm kind of losing my mind. I'm kind of going we crazy. Good girl, not turning around is a good choice. Who are you? I'm, um, uh, you, you know, know, a witch so terrifying that it'll make your hair stand on end. Look at Amelia. She's like, hmm. Where's Echidna? And then we get the sad realization that Echidna doesn't want to see <laughs> Amelia. Echidna, Amelia's caused the- Who's that sad for? You or Amelia? Echidna's ha had a terrible time, okay? Uh, I hurt her really badly at the end of it. Damn. Um, how did the third trial look to you? And then we go over the course of what Amelia did see, which is a lot of sad worlds or possibilities of things ending up, you know, in different mm -hmm. ways, which is also a thing that we could talk about, like what led to these different instances. But with us just trying to interpret which voice belongs to which voice actress in a different language, that might cause us a little bit of issue. Yeah. Um, but then we get into more of their conversation and Amelia says, yeah, Echidna is definitely a mean girl you're content with just calling that mean how can you look so relaxed it's like well it's just weird it's like the idea of learning from amelia in this case or being like whoa what explain yourself how are you so positive here you saw all those terrible futures and yet but it's not guaranteed right a future like that is possible but there's a chance that it won't be like that as long as I know that, it's fine. I can always fight it. Wind starts blowing. Hair starts moving. You don't think you'll break right away? If I was alone, maybe. But they won't let me be alone. One of my favorite lines this episode. They won't let me be alone. And now here, I'm like really starting to focusing on how similar the designs of their outfits are. You know, mm -hmm. like the drop shoulder and everything. Um, you're pretty strong. That part of you is nothing like your mother. Huh? Are you saying you know my... Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 uh-huh. Continues to keep her from turning around. <sighs> yes, I know her well, but I can't tell you more. I promised I wouldn't. Who? Who did you promise you wouldn't? The actual mother or yourself? Does Amelia know what her mom looks like, you know? Are we sure of that? I mean, kind of, based off of, like, language Fortuna used. Like, oh, you have your mothers, you have, you it, know. It felt like um, Fortuna was kind of trying to piece together an idea of what the parents looked like. Not that Amelia had ever actually seen I them. think Fortuna knew who the, what the parents looked like. Oh, no, I, like. I, yeah, I yeah, agree. Yeah. yeah, and then was just, like, com uh, commenting on the fact that Amelia looked so similar. Yeah, giving which her gives pieces. Which gives me the impression that Amelia has no active memory of what her parents look like um 
I know what it's like when you can't say something rather than just or actually I want to take that back I know I know <laughs> sorry um I won't ask you anything then you're sure I know what it's like when you can't say something rather than just not wanting to the idea of like not being able to a promise to besides my mother is mother fortuna Minerva's reaction. I see. Shaking. Trembles. I guess her evil plots do good things sometimes. Echidna's. We yeah. Like Echidna said, she might be an evil person that does some nice things. I don't cry. I don't have the right to cry now. Nobody needs to have the right to... I love this line from Minerva, too. What did I tell you? Not turning around was the right choice. See, at this point, though, I'm like, it's too obvious. <laughs> like, 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 and that's, and I, I need your interpretation because, because of the fact that, like, I felt like it was a possibility. Now I'm like, holy shit, how would this not be her mom? They're, like, obviously trying to fuck with me and it can't, I don't know. So I guess I have to try to think, try to think about it from a perspective of someone who hadn't heard your speculative theory that's a good previously train of thought uh because obviously operating as i was i as soon as the scene started as soon as it was as it was minerva there instead of echidna i was immediately like oh my god ben how does ben what's ben thinking mm -hmm. about this ben has been saying you know minerva was an option and i was so against minerva being an option but then i when i start to think about it from if i had never heard your theory i think that i because of dialogue would be suspicious here yeah that, that minerva was the mother i think because of minerva's sadness but also like care the idea that she doesn't want to be seen by her there's a lot of dialogue pieces that the happiness that Amelia was able to feel like she wasn't alone in her child. Okay, if you were the true mother of Amelia and you knew you had left your child behind, what you would want is to know that they had felt like they were loved enough by another person that they were able to call that person like that was my mother. So, and not only that, it's like you'd expect, like Minerva was surprised at how strong Amelia was. You'd expect if you had left your daughter that they might not be strong mm -hmm. and and they, they they had every right there to be weak or to cry because they there was a disservice done upon that like onto them mm -hmm. and then putting up the idea that maybe it wasn't minerva not wanting amelia to look at her but maybe minerva wasn't wanting to look at amelia like to be like a reminder of of mm -hmm. what was there and right what Minerva didn't give. That's a nice direction to go into because Echidna doesn't like looking at Amelia. Yeah. Doesn't like interacting with Amelia. I think, um, I don't know. I, I do, I like the theory and I think that if I hadn't heard you say it, that I would, I would be feeling it after this conversation. I, I think that you could then bring up the idea that Minerva was always kind of one of the first to act on behalf of Subaru mm -hmm. in the tea party. I think Minerva has a similar personality to this, like kind of Amelia coming into her own over the last couple episodes, mm -hmm. this kind of sassy justice kind of side of her that she has, that's going to fight for what's right. I'm okay with being a despicable witch girl, you yeah. know? I think that that has a Minerva energy to it. What is it like when Min does Minerva interact with Satella? Like at that time mm -hmm. when Satella entered into the tea party, yeah. did Minerva interact with her? Mm -hmm. I don't remember specifically what Minerva's reaction was. They all had different reactions. I think Typhon was like excited. Some of the others were, Echidna was upset about it or a little bit like, oh, shoot, trouble's coming. But I don't remember what Minerva's reaction was. Actually, like, like now that we're here, I'm trying to go back to see what Minerva's reaction was, but I accidentally clicked on the wrong episode and I'm getting the first introduction we have to Minerva. 
if you're here in this fleeting world, don't expect to make it back unscathed. My fist will restore the world. My rage, the fury of my fists shall be my answer. That's right, I'm angry. I hate this world for making her do that. Thanks for saving me. And you are... I'm the Witch of Wrath Minerva. The pointing. My I am this. My name isn't worth giving. And then my name isn't worth giving, too. If you've learned your lesson, don't do anything careless. Next time, I'll just heal everyone. <laughs> um. That's Love of Love You. Witch's Tea Party, I believe. No, it was the sound that makes you want to cry. Uh, yeah. Because that's something that we need to see, right? If If we're entertaining the idea that Minerva might be Amelia's mom... We need to see what, we need to bring up the idea that we had said, or that I had said, that, that Amelia could, or Satella could be a future iteration yeah. of Amelia. Okay. Can I really? He's laying there. Satella, I believe, is approaching him at this point. Yeah. And then Minerva's looking She's right crying. at Subaru. You are the one who saved me. So I will allow you to be saved too. Is there any dialogue? It's my wish for you. To be saved. While Satella is crying, right? So does Minerva refuse to look at her, but is fearing, feeling tearful? They're standing together looking at him. Yeah. It's almost like... Was, did, was Minerva crying? She was crying. She had tears in her eyes. I want to see that. Hold on. Right I've when Subaru wakes word. up. See? There's she tears in her eyes. She does have tears in her eyes. And in the shot of her just standing, looking down at him, and Satella kneeling, it is like she is with Satella with this. She is in emotional over and this. And so far, she hasn't looked at her, uh -huh. right? There is also a refusing to look. She has her focus on Subaru. But we see her go to Subaru, so there would have to be an aspect of looking, looking, right? Right, so when does Satella first enter the scene? Way back, we, that's what we were just looking at when she first entered the scene. Okay, so oh, I, wait, actually, we didn't actually look at it yet, of when she first enters, so I want to see Minerva's reaction. Okay, For, like, literally the start of the episode. It. Everybody's watching Satella enter. Uh-huh. Minerva looks surprised. Yeah. Talk about rude. I think Minerva might get in the middle of them. Seriously, what is with you? For so very long. I've loved you for so long. Both you and Echidna are sane. I won't accept any help. Is that good enough for you? So you're just going to keep dying starting over? And making everyone cry, See, really? See, making everyone cry. Like... Minerva's the one that insinuates that the way that you're living is making people cry. Why would she be the one that, like, wants to speak up on that? And, who, and who do you think's crying, mm -hmm. you know? I'm saying that deciding you're the only one who needs to suffer is cowardly. That twisted thinking makes you more vile than any witch. And above all, it's really ungrateful to her. There's a protection oh, there. Yo, I feel like the first time we watched it, I was like, "What the fuck?" To, it's really ungrateful to her. Why would she, why would uh, why would she be caring about Satella, you know, or mm -hmm. or wanting to give the pertinent information of that ability, you know? Of course, she'd be if if this theory is correct. If either of those theories in tandem are correct, it makes sense that Minerva would be the one to first bring up the idea of like this behavior of yours more vile than a witch, maybe just in her opinion because of proximity and care, but that uh, the idea of making people cry and then to be focused on almost protecting Satella, protecting Satella's emotions. And he, and Minerva's the one who punches mm -hmm. Subaru while he's on the ground. This will be a piece of cake, stay out of the way, Typhon. And then we get what we had just looked upon, right? Mm -hmm. When he's back. And then afterwards, once Echidna has her spiel, I want to see if there's any other, like, looks we get from Minerva. Let's try our best to add this in, in discussion. As much just as so we that, can, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
compared to dying, it's nothing. And then we get Satella standing up, holding Subaru's hand. Don't fret all alone. Fight alongside the people who care about you, which is that same thing that Minerva was echoing. Minerva's like arms crossed looking over like I I'm gonna like put way too much on this but like pissed that you're not appreciating my daughter you yeah. know you're ungrateful to her her love for yeah. you and what she's done for you and you're just gonna keep making her cry don't forget that there are people who grieve when you die okay that's about it and then we get to see what looks like Amelia as a kidna right now as a kidna you mean sorry as Satella yeah. uh now I don't know how the fuck that would work unless like within the the tea party within that realm it surpasses time that even future witches are there but and I'm also not saying that uh for sure I'm like yeah Minerva Amelia's mom confirmed that's not at all it but we have to talk about it right we the have witches to. all seemingly have a close relationship anyway so it, it in theory, she could feel like an aunt to Amelia. Yeah. She could have love for whoever Amelia's real mother is because we know her real mother is a witch that she knows well. So if we just take her dialogue as that, that your mother is someone that I know very well, then of course this would be almost like an emotional reunion for her and she has care for Amelia. Do you think, does this door remind you of the sealed door? And do you think that there is any direct connection between that door sealing away the witches or doing something in regards to them? This is Echidna's grave. Yeah. Does that make you think, if you're going in that direction, are you trying to say that the door that was in the forest it would be whoever Amelia's mother is grave? Potentially. I, I do like that idea. Mm. Um... Th that was a big portion of the episode and then we get amelia waking back up in the mm -hmm, sanctuary yeah. and going into what looks like to be echidna's grave but amelia says something about it right mm -hmm. like where is echidna who, is, who this? is this this should be echidna's grave what's your yeah. interpretation of that so my first thought other than confusion was wondering if Echidna warped her, uh, how Amelia would perceive her during the trials, we have her on the cliffside being talked to. And I was wondering if she was, if that was for us that we then saw Echidna crying. Yeah. And if it wasn't something that Amelia was necessarily seeing. What if she's just a disembodied voice? But then again, we see Amelia, when we first start the trials, Echidna and Amelia have this interaction of being like, yes, I'm this, you know, despicable witch. And it's not like Echidna would be a disembodied voice. So you'd think we'd have some clearer idea that she was changing how she was being viewed if that was the case. Any possibility that isn't Echidna's body, Echidna never died, the seal is a link to the room that the tea party is held in. All of them are trapped or like sealed away as opposed to dead bodies. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to answer. Okay. Not Do you think the snow the when Amelia walks out of there is from the great rabbit? I don't know in the timeline where that falls with the Puck and Roswell fight. Me either. Fight. I, that, I have no... Honestly, that that's what, like, fucks me over in terms of speculation there. Because that was my first thought, but then we see them, and even where they end, there's fire, you know? Right. We know that Puck... So there was a great amount of fire. The ending, there was a perceived possible death of a maiden in love, if we're gonna... We're gonna obviously go into it more. Puck could, after that point, cause a snowstorm, you know, something uh, more violent against Roswell now that there was not someone else's, someone else that could get hurt or in the way. Yeah. So he could maybe go more full force fighting Roswell. So that is my, t that's the timeline conversation. I don't know where these different, what's happening in the mansion, what's happening with Ram and Puck, what's happening with Amelia, where those line up. Yeah. 
Um, okay, next thing I want to talk about that I just, like, appreciated as a moment was during the amazing fight uh, between Garp and Elsa. This is so fucking cool. This is when Garp utilizes his divine protection of earth spirits yeah so long as my feet are on the ground everything i can see is within my strike range that's so badass garp is so much cooler than i ever gave him credit for he was very epic in this fight i think like you said this is one of the best battles in ReZero. one-on-one on one specifically oh. a best battle it definitely like hands down it's so fucking good. My wounds continue to heal themselves. The idea that she's a vampire comes up. I drove it into his belly. At that moment. At that moment, even as I felt like I might freeze in that blizzard, I had a thought. Fire in Elsa's eyes. Blood and innards are so very warm. And I love that just the setting of the fight, like, lends her fire for the warmth of her description. Yeah. If there is happiness in this world, it is the warmth that makes one forget the cold. That is what one of the things I wanted line. to bring up was, like, the first happiness she ever found. Uh, that The line just popped up. Yeah. The first happiness she ever found was this. The warmth that came from killing him, basically. Cutting into his belly. And then these two lines were phenomenal, too. I will kill you. Uh, kill you. I will kill you, Elsa Grainheart. And then immediately, my love for you will begin after I kill you, Garfal Tinsel. It's so cool. I love it so much. What a cool fight. Just it, it, obviously, there. Okay, so the biting into the neck, the just the shard of glass that she pulls great moment in the fight because that's what she tells us she used against the man yeah and then that goes through what like garfield's hand uh -huh. and then they both mutually bite each other's necks and uh, that scene was like frederica took may lee out of there that yeah. is also an interesting point from that fight um is was that to save may lee was that to make sure may lee didn't interfere with garf anymore was that because she trusted that Garf was going to kill Elsa, and now that she knew Mei Li was like a, either a real sister or like a sister to Elsa, she didn't want her to see Elsa's demise? Mm -hmm. What What is going on there in terms of level of care is a question for me, just out of curiosity. I don't think I need to have that answered. I'm just curious. Don't you think that, sorry to like sidetrack it a little bit, we have this friend um that loves Baldur's Gate and there's a character in Baldur's Gate named Astarian. Mm -hmm. If you could be a vampire yourself in Baldur's Gate, don't you think that our friend like their dream scenario they would geek out over two vampires yes. like biting each yes. other's necks like that? Yes. They would love that. <sighs> Got to show them the scene. <laughs> I've compared that same friend to Ram in this series. I think we've also recently brought up that that same friend is obsessed with Baldur's Gate. It's consistent. It's just, consistency is key. Yeah. But I, I, I mean it when I say that the Elsa Gar fight is one of the highlights of the series Definitely. to me and my favorite fight, I think. Um, okay. I only have a couple more things I feel like I'm capable of mentally yeah. talking about. I thought that fight was going to be the end of the episode, to be honest. Yeah. I was actually shocked that the episode had uh, how many more minutes would you even guess? Like six more minutes to yeah. it? But, uh... It, it switches back to Puck, Roswell, and Ram. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea of Roswell doctoring the contract between Puck and Amelia while she was depressed after a fight with Subaru. Like, and then I love Puck's... I love Puck's defensiveness of Amelia. You wanted Leah to stay in, discouraged. Like, like that, like, are you fucking kidding me? I love uh, the diversion of instead of transforming, Puck actually... Like, just becomes bigger. Mm -hmm. um, there was a line about Puck remembering something from before the contract recently as well. Yeah. And we we don't touch on it at all. It just gets said. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <sighs> I know. I know. What memories? What What is it that Puck remembered from before the contract? Uh, it's just, like, the Ram to Roswell conversation was so, like, that. I was, like, so engulfed in that. 
Right. I'll prioritize my own feelings over those of the dead. I love you. I, the only real dialogue piece, I know we didn't go into the scene of what Amelia saw for the disaster to come because it was just so many lines of dialogue. Some of them were easier to pick out who it was that was saying it than others. That, I I think that we'd probably be have to be sitting here for 30 minutes not talking and re-listening to like yes. which voice is which. So maybe in the intro of next episode we can come at it with that. Yes. Do, uh, you know. Totally. There was one, though, that I did write down. Hmm. And I think I did say out loud, that was Ram. And it was a line to do with the idea that the person that they, the person that she hated was actually a good person. Yeah. It was something like that. It To that idea of having perceived, there was this hatred in Ram toward Roswell at the beginning, and it has now turned into love, like, that Ram has realized that this person was a good person. Mm -hmm. At least to Ram. At the moment, I'm like, it looks like Ram dies at the end. Roswell isn't showing me that Roswell's a good person. The book is gone. I love Ram for that. I was scared when Ram coughed up blood, and then Ram got exploded. Yeah, Ram knew. Ram honestly made a choice here that was like, I would rather... I'm okay with dying here as long as I get this away from you. Yeah, and I'm worried for Ram. I, I truthfully am. On one hand, I'm like, everything is leaning to the fact that, like, she would be getting gravely injured here. No way they'd kill Ram if the season was coming to an end soon and we're not going to redo everything the right way. But then from what you said in the intro of this episode, mixed with, like, oh my god, what if they give us Ram back but at the cost of killing Ram, you know? Mm-hmm. Is Ram okay? This scene really hurt me because it's not like I wanted Roswell to be like, oh my god, I love you too, Ram. Yeah. I'm not going to fight you anymore. It's not like I wanted that. That wasn't the purpose. And we have already spent time knowing that Roswell is still been in love with Echidna. We can't forget and ignore the fact that he has been with Ram since she was a child yep. and also is the reason her entire like hometown was burned to the ground and everyone died. So I can't ignore that. So it's not like I wanted him to be like, oh my God, I love you too. Mm -hmm. But what we see here is also heartbreaking because he's like, he's rattled by her saying this. He's confused by it. It doesn't make sense to him that she could have anything but actual hatred for him. It angers him, but he doesn't have enough care for her and love for her to not want to retaliate against what she's done for this book. I think Ram is probably 100% aware that this is a one-sided, unrequited oh, love. yeah. Like, Ram knows that Roswell's love is for this book and Echidna mainly, and that Echidna and this book are a curse on him, and he will never find happiness as long as he has that. And she is self-sacrificing here in the same way that Rem is self-sacrificing for Subaru, even in, even though knowing both the twins mm -hmm. love a man that loves someone else mm -hmm. and will sacrifice themselves for that person. <laughs> Do you ever just say something sometimes and then because it, you realized it and that's why it immediately came out of your mouth and then you're like, dang. Yeah. And then you are like, I'm done talking. <laughs> What a cool, like, I, I will never get over the fact that, like, they've been able to, like, hold and manage so much within this show and universe, and it's so fucking good. Agreed. I just, I want to keep going. I, I hate that we can't continue on into the next episode, but also, I don't want to believe that Ram is dead. I don't want to believe that, I know I said it in the intro, that what if... Subaru actually does have to sacrifice someone in order to complete this arc and that someone really does have to die even though he said he wouldn't want to do that I just can't get over this fucking the, the Minerva, Minerva thing, thing happened I legitimately can't you know what I can't get over Puck's line about yeah he'll do anything to protect Amelia but also girls in love yeah. I'm like yeah so just one more time there, there is blue at the center of Amelia's eyes, you know? 
That is true. There is blue. There is blue. And there's a blue and pink cotton candy nest that's happening for Minerva. And purple. There's like a, some purple. A little bit. It's more blue. I feel like if you like merge them all together, it'd be closer to purple. But I legit, I, in my, I, in my like wanting to talk about episodes and episodes ago, who Amelia's mom could be, if not Satella, I was like, the only way this is ever touched on again is seasons from now. Like, like seasons. N I had no fuck. I, I'm losing my mind even currently. Still. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to be such a, I'm going to be a bigger idiot now though. If the, this isn't the case. If this, oh, if, come if on. Minerva. Other, other people viewing this, this scene specifically, even if they hadn't had any thoughts prior, like you did, they would possibly be suspicious over this scene as well. I agree, but it, but because of that, it could be a red herring. And it could be a relation, Minerva being, like, connected to Amelia's mom in a different way. But why would the author specifically pick this person as the character unless there was already reason to be suspicious, hence why you came up with this idea episodes ago? Mm. You know? I don't know. Because we know that Amelia's mom is a witch. Confirmed. Yep. Confirmed. All I all I want to do now at this point, other than, you know, take a nice breather for my brain and uh, break for myself and my body and my emotions, and then in the future watch another episode of ReZero, I want to see your reaction to this scene with Minerva and Amelia. I will totally be watching it. I want to to edit this episode just so I can be the one that sees this first firsthand. I want to be the first person to see what the look on your face if was. If anybody ever listens to us talk and yap, and they had heard that I had thought that Minerva might be Amelia's mom, and they knew this episode was coming, whether it's because it's a misdirection or not, I can imagine them being like, yo... If Ben doesn't remember his theory, that would be fucking infuriating. That, and think about the people who don't listen to us yap, that are going to be really confused by me being like, Ben, 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 during it. Dude, it's like, it's to the point of like, I was talking to you about this, like on car rides to other places. You were not letting it go. No. No. And I was so like, you need to cool off on that. I feel like I'm so bad at this stuff, though. I'm. I feel like I'm often very bad at speculation and trying to tie down what could happen. But I just like doing it, and it Stop. brings up conversation for us. But it's like, like the thought that there might be one instance in my entire life of me being right in something is like, I can't believe that. I can't accept that. Out of all of your more. Um interesting theories or speculations in the history of this channel out of all of those that i have been so cold against so harshly adamantly I'm against just... it you saying you're an idiot me being like no I, w I wouldn't say something so mean like that but me being like where is he getting this from this is probably the first one that might actually come out and be like true and i'm gonna have to like apologize beg for forgiveness bow down uh trust you so much more no please don't <laughs> god no i will steer us in the wrong direction every fucking time i can think of so many instances <laughs> hmm. all right that's all i have you yep vampires exist god damn it thank you guys so much for watching this video please like comment and subscribe and we hope to see you next time